Yeah, we shall start. Yeah, good afternoon, my dear uh, teacher participants. This uh, good afternoon, uh, last day of first week and last mm -hmm. session of first week, we have completed uh, one week of uh, RC. And um, we have with us uh, Professor Aisha M. Sharif, who is a senior most professor in our department in Bahadur Institute of Management Sciences with uh, 36 years of uh, long experience in teaching industry and uh, consultancy and research experience. Uh, her area of uh, specialization is uh, organization behavior and uh, HRM. She was a uh, vice chancellor in charge before, uh, uh, served as a syndicate member, academic council member, finance committee member, and uh, dean of faculty of commerce and the director of uh, center of uh, uh, proficiency and development and placement services. Uh, she is also a court member of Central University of Kashmir and Academic Council of Pondicherry Central University. She is on a core committee of uh, AICT, all, in, all, all India Council of Technical Education for curriculum design and, uh, 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 and management of uh, education in India and is an active member of uh, NAC, NAC peer committee and was selected to attend leadership training in Harvard University by Ministry of HRD, Government of India. She is a recipient of Kamal Nayan Bajaj Memorial Award and APJ Abdul Kalam Teacher Extraordinate Award you know, in the year 2017. She has taught students of Marshall University. She is a consultant of Board of Technical Education in Saudi Arabia. She has produced uh, uh, 21 PhDs so far and has published 71 papers in professional journals, both uh, national and international. She was on a panel of Confederation of Indian Industry, Mysore chapter. Ma'am, you have uh, muted, ma'am. Voice is not coming. Uh, Nyanawani program and corporate of reputed and chair many. So we have with us a uh, professor program, madam. This is for uh, commerce and management, 30th uh, refresher course with a thrust area of emerging trends in teaching commerce and management in light of NEP 2020. And today, uh, ma'am will be delivering a lecture on approaches to teaching and evaluation of soft skill in the light of NEP. Uh, next two sessions will be on this and ma'am will come again for participants uh, seminar uh, on 27th and 28th. Madam, I, I'll not be there to introduce again because they already know you. You can directly yes, start no. with your uh, timetable. Uh, yeah. 27th and 28th, madam. Uh, yes, so yes. the four sessions, madam, will be engaging uh, all of you. Welcome to the session, madam. It's all yours Thank now. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll leave the session. Thank you. A very good afternoon to all the ladies and gentlemen here. Good afternoon. 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 Uh, yes, sir. The um, thrust area is of on skill development as promulgated by national education policy. So the NEP 2020 recognizes the uh, importance of soft skills, such as say communication, teamwork, problem solving, decision making, analytical thinking, resilience building. Now these are all skills that are imperative to the children, the students, in their everyday life. They, we also call them as life skills. The, uh, you see, uh, in the process of uh, uh, imparting academic knowledge, there is a lot of responsibility on we shoulders to, uh, on we uh, teachers to shoulder this responsibility of imparting soft skills to students. 
see nep 2020 also encourages the colleges to uh, you know deal with shortage of teachers by sharing across campuses and the policy also recommends reaching out to local eminent persons or experts as master instructors so this is an opportunity at once to all of you to get yourself identified okay and then you know uh, contribute as soft skills trainers in colleges now talking about teaching soft skills see education is dominated by discussion of the hard sciences these days with great emphasis we know that is placed on say science technology engineering mathematics we call that stem you know uh, so instructions on these stem areas is you know lot uh, there's a lot of uh, emphasis that is being laid on it now this has left teachers of other subject areas maybe arts history commerce feeling a little left out of the conversation surrounding how to prepare students for future careers however even less discussed are the soft skills that are that the students need to succeed once they are out of the college once they enter into the bandwagon of the workforce there are rarely classes that are designed specifically to impart soft skills you see that doesn't mean to say that these skills aren't important for the students soft skills include talents such as creative problem solving now the, that are, they are these are some of the skills that are that need to be distinguished from the hard skills now this is uh, in fact uh, soft skills refer to the non technical abilities which i just told you that includes communication it includes leadership teamwork being self aware empathy emotional intelligence the list goes on so the essential soft skills for teachers are often overlooked in the colleges but remember they are vital for teachers to succeed now let's look at this hard skills versus the soft skills you see hard skills as opposed to the soft skills are the type of skills that students routinely get taught it could be from school and it it gets extended to college as well now these are the skills that are very easily quantifiable they are measured for instance when a student performs well in school they receive you know high marks it could be in the form of grades it could be for in the form of marks they are eventually awarded a degree that demonstrates that they have attained a certain level of mastery in those skills it's easy to check the degree of mastery over these skills based on the grades that they that they get whereas soft skill is something very very abstract very subjective they are lot harder to quantify now while you can hand out certificates for skills say like you gone through a program of leadership skills then you can yes be certified that you have gone through a leadership program but how do you actually quantify leadership say for example say a grade of 90 in mathematics can represent that a student has scored you know uh let's say for nine out of the 10 questions correctly and those questions are easily checked and verified because they have a definite answer 
so quantifying and verifying these subjects is far easier soft skills cannot be quantified and verified with the same ease just see the onus the responsibility that we need to have when we impart this because they are not uh, you know easily measured however the soft skills are still incredibly important and colleges still need to communicate to impart these uh, skills to the students they they are indeed topics of great importance that we must consider in our curriculum now when students move beyond schools and colleges and move into their careers uh you know there is a list of soft skills that uh, they need to learn see hard skills might be listed like data analysis or mathematics uh, someone applying for a job can point of uh, you know point out to their degree in these areas where uh, it suggests that they have made sufficient grades in these areas however students will see when they are applying for job will also look for i mean the employers will also look for soft skills in them that also needs to be in a way uh it has to be there must be some kind of a detailed orientation uh, uh you know when they say that they have gone through these skills because hiring managers will look for not only the hard skills but also the soft skills since most students uh will never find the opportunity to go through training okay uh, uh, in areas that are very important required for a workplace say for example um, in uh, you know training in uh, say team work training in leadership or so on so forth it falls on the teachers responsibility to integrate the instructions uh, of soft skill into their existing courses now let's look at an array of examples of soft skills now what are some of the soft skills and how are they used see every job will prioritize different soft skills but here uh, i will uh, just talk about some of the skills that are more frequently identified as necessary in the workforce many times these broad soft skills see it need not necessarily be at the workplace it is also i'm i'm i when i i in the initial stage itself i said it's all about life skills so it could be your family is an organization how how effectively as a student even if you don't go for work how effectively as an individual you will put to use these soft skills same way when you go for work what is expected of you because interpersonal skills today is of utmost importance as you enter into an organization because invariably you are you are interacting with various levels of people it could be superiors it could be your peers it could be your subordinates people who look up to you okay for suggestions and advice or you know people uh, or interact with people whom you have to learn from how they how they take decisions how they resolve issues conflicts so there are there is an array of things that the students need to get themselves exposed to so many times these broad skills em encompass smaller skills such that many smaller skills help the student prepare to be successful in broad categories it could be in communication it could be in team work in it could be in handling people so what would be the scope of this soft skill see there is a there are um, scores when i say scores umpteen number of Uh, skills that you could list i'm just speaking of a few skills you know it's uh, public speaking so important children need to learn this art of public face speaking they need to learn the art of facing the audience when there is a large uh, you know audience sitting children find it you know so scary why why go to children uh, 
when we all began our uh, careers as teachers i'm sure we had butterflies in our stomach when the first time we had to face an audience or when the first time we gave a demonstration class see nobody has just risen like that we've all started doing something first the first time and we have gone we have faced several challenges now children must be given the confidence okay to be standing on a podium or a, or a stage to be able to speak to people now these are these are the things that we need to inculcate in them when they are small otherwise complexes will build in this children and then you will see that uh, you know um, they need to be given a lot of opportunities to display leadership okay enthusiasm initiative you must give them opportunities for this they must be taught to rise to an occasion where they are able to solve issues and the other sanna putters then can be a they could be very small and when as students in school or colleges the issues may be very small as they grow bigger as they become executives as they become uh, uh, important responsible uh, as they grow into uh, uh, individuals holding responsible positions they may have to uh, deal with uh, handling conflicts of uh, greater uh, degree and uh, you know magnitude children every day like every one of us need to know how to take decisions they can't every time be non aligned they must be able to be decisive in their approach we need to give them input on how to take decisions then time management so important and the very other you know antarla they say that at a very young age you must inculcate that um, uh, the time is money that the, you know inculcate the values of time so time management needs to be imparted to them they need to be taught how to manage their stress levels of course be going by gender they could be uh, you know women have their own levels of stress the girls have their own levels of stress the boys have a different um, uh, you know uh, uh, level of stress how do these children uh, you know uh, first of all identify that they are going through stress and how do they Uh, attempt to resolve these issues and then all along communication skills so important if you have communication you can win the world so we need to give a lot because you nodi know, children will learn to model seeing the teacher they are so observant the first thing even in the kind right from the kindergarten days what the children learn to is learn to emulate their teachers chicken ninna no nim nortive teacher teacher atan i mean you know um, uh, children learn that uh, you know from their teachers so how we walk how we talk the voice the voice the way we deal with things everything is being noticed absorbed and children want to emulate it so we how we communicate to the students and uh, is an important thing and how we involve ourselves in developing the communication skills of the students are equally important and then within this ambit there are several interpersonal skills you know you could name n number of interpersonal skills can uh, can even be in terms of you know um, uh, uh, heightening their sensitivity towards others empathizing their ability to uh, you know to relate themselves to others so in, in this aspect of uh, interpersonal skills we even teach them the etiquettes of uh, you know using mobile phones we teach them the etiquettes when you're conversing with your superiors how do you do when you converse with your uh, friends how do you do when you, you email what are the etiquettes now there are so many things within these soft skills that uh you know uh, soft skill encompasses so many of these uh, skills so let me go by a few you see uh, when you are talking about uh, say communication skills now this is so important because even if someone is highly skilled in their field okay 
their um, uh, let us say domain area they may be experts they still need to help the organization succeed it doesn't matter how well they perform their uh, individual jobs if they can't communicate what they are doing uh, you know what they are doing is hardly known to others now when communication breaks down people get confused they get confused about what has been done what needs to be done and when things are due now this can lead to projects failing because the communication has come to a halt so effective communication requires individuals to be strong listeners whenever we talk about communication we are talking about the listening skills as well and they need to be able to understand where others stand with regards to say finishing a um, finishing a work now how do how because you see unless they communicate they cannot collectively work so good communicators listen and then respond so ensuring that everyone within the classroom or all the students or all the um, uh, employees who work as a team have a solid understanding of work is important because that uh, i mean that that is to be ensured communication must serve the purpose of understanding for what it has been uh, you know it has been used for let's take creativity now you see this creativity is one of the most uh, underrated skills for people uh, you know um, uh, uh, underrated i said because not much attention is being given to the development of creativity people get accustomed to working according to certain rules and regulations there is a set norm within which people uh, are required to work so when this rigidity is there what happens they don't think out of the box while uh, this is sufficient for dealing with you know this kind of rule regulation rules regulations and procedures is good for dealing with most work issues uh, you know that is day to day and that is routine but uh, um, when it comes to seeking innovative solutions okay or when a time uh, requires you to come out with novel ideas to problem resolutions then creativity plays a very important role creative individuals are able to work within the limits of their organization in such a way that they conceive new approach they have alternative approaches that help them to improve the way uh you know work is being done and um, they they have the ability to respond to varying situations as and uh, when issues arise they are able to find solutions to the problems now those with a solid sense of creativity are generally innovative problem solvers they have an ability to understand the problems in front of them and the solutions that they have maybe somewhere tried and tested and they know yes there is uh, you know uh, they know how to draw from their experience and then reapproach it now when an understanding of the issue or maybe previous responses give some experience to the individual the creative individual is in a position to assess what are the resources that are available how do how do we develop uh, you know new approaches to solving the problem so that is how an individual will start thinking then let's say for example adaptability now as, as this is a, a skill that any student will use from say schools or colleges throughout their career and this is the ability to adapt themselves to any given situation one of the purposes of uh, uh, colleges is to get the students used to a, a routine of a day's work adike we have say children uh, you know come for study 
they spend about seven hours in school from morning to evening and this gets continued and you know when they go to their workplace in fact now the situation is that the number of hours they put in workplace would be doubled so they get so they are in a way trying to adapt themselves to the changing requirements of regular schedules of work that are set hours or maybe even go beyond and extend their working hours so children as a, i mean I, the students in colleges need to adapt themselves to a structure and uh, to a routine which is which would become a normal day's work however they also need to be able to adapt in the face of say novel circumstances say a sudden change occurs or an unanticipated problem arises and it can leave the students uh, you know uh, uh, unable to effectively respond to the situation so as in colleges itself when we uh, put them through this Uh, situations of crisis they learn how to adapt themselves as students learn to be more and more adaptable they become better uh, situated to respond to range of problems so a student who learns how to adapt quickly to changing uh, college conditions of school conditions is better better suited to respond in the workplace when new problems arise i was talking to you also about public speaking see public speaking stands apart from general communication skills maybe on a one to one basis we may be in a position to talk comfortably but public speaking requires its own unique set of communication skills the delivery the diction the voice modulation okay the um, ability to respond okay given the circumstances so when talking in front of others people need to be able to speak confidently be clear in their messaging they may require it, it may be required for them to use solid logic in their presentation while uh, particularly while they are when they are under additional pressure of being watched by others so an effective public speaker understands their audience and how to speak to them for instance if speaking to a highly technical audience they use the lingo that the audience understands then it becomes more effective so this language can be technical to match the audience and focus on processes that were developed to solve organizational issues now say for example it's a business oriented audience they need to use less technical language and focus more tightly on what solutions were developed and how that could have benefited the organization so in, see i'm just talking about how children should be nurtured and equipped to be able to fit themselves uh, through these soft skills in their workplace now coming to teamwork see the nature of the classroom lends itself to helping uh, students develop the soft skills of teamwork now teamwork requires that the students interact with one another towards completing a singular goal a given task now this is something that they'll often face in the workplace because they are asked to work towards resolving an organizational issue or as they work with others they are required to meet the goals set forth by their employers so effective teamwork draws together a number of other skills their interpersonal skills their communication skills the, you know their ability to listen their i mean the way they make suggestions you know the use of assertiveness skills all this is so so very important 
you know, being a member of the team, if they are passive, people exploit them. They take advantage. Others will take advantage of the children who are passive or, I mean, the person who is passive. If the individual is aggressive, they may want to brush him aside. Or if the individual is aggressive, it becomes rather difficult to ensure, uh, you know, that uh, the, the harmony, the cohesiveness within the group. So what happens is part of the teamwork involves understanding the hierarchy within the group. Some people have assertive leadership. See, assertive leadership style is something where you base your, uh, what do you say? You base your uh, um, uh, style not only on feelings, but also facts. When you put facts and feelings firmly together before your uh, before the person with whom you are negotiating or talking, then you are more likely to be assertive. Sometimes going by emotions, you could be aggressive, which is not, see, it's not necessary to be aggressive to be assertive. You can be calm and yet be firm. You know, you have seen many people who, you know, who don't rub against anybody for anything. They will ensure that what they want they will be able to get and without any abrasions. That is by being assertive. See, when you're assertive, you are clear with what is the requirement. It could be in terms of emotions. You will, you will play the feelings in the right, uh, I must say, matra, in the, in the right measure. You will, you will put forth facts which are logic, which makes sense. You use the utilization of the information would be so apt that you are able to convince and persuade the audience or, uh, or the uh, uh, person on the other side. So I was trying to tell you that part of the teamwork involves understanding hierarchy within the group. Some people have assertive leadership. And they may feel comfortable organizing how the group will meet their goals. Okay, it is more directive and instructive in their approach. Others might be passive individuals who would prefer to remain in the background. And they would like to focus on technical details of the project or about of, of work or of an event. So regardless of their own personal styles, individuals who learn teamwork skills, learn how to use their personal styles for the good of the larger group rather than your, their own good at the expense of others in the group. So uh, subduing self-interest for the larger interest is the key for teamwork. Now, uh, you know, uh, there are several types of activities uh, for teaching soft skills. Unfortunately, when it comes to teaching, some instructors fail to think up ways to integrate these skills into the classroom. In many cases, soft skills are picked up to varying degrees through routine classroom activities. Uh, you know, they, they could also be, some of you could really initiate. You may have already been doing that, you know, taking uh, specifically designed programs and activities to help the students learn the soft skills that will serve them well in their careers. See, soft skills are considered so important to workplace success that there are programs designed to focus on uh, primarily major skills. I will talk about communication, teamwork, networking, then professionalism, enthusiasm, attitudinal development, problem solving, or even critical thinking. So it's not that the approach is the same. Then you may have different approaches to teaching different sets of skills. Now, this is a mixed basket of methodologies that you would use 
to teach some of these skills. As only one example, the curriculum of communication skills has several activities that uh, you know the students can participate uh, to help improve their ability to communicate effectively. Now, in one activity, how you could use is students are asked to play out a short play with one student acting, say, let us, as students of commerce and management, let us take a uh, industrial setup where uh, one student is, act, uh, is asked to act uh, or play the role of a worker who is receiving feedback from the second student who is supposedly to act as the boss. Now, after the play is over, students are asked several questions. Andre, they are all well thought out lead questions about the interaction. How did the first student respond to the feedback? How did the second student communicate his or her concerns? Was it being well received? Was the boss assertive in explaining? If he wasn't, how could he have been more assertive? Did the reaction from the employee or the worker been aggressive? Was he or was it passive, which, has, which could have led to his exploitation? Or if he's aggressive, how could he have replied in a way that, you see, by just using a small context of interaction, there are so many ways you can teach children how to deal with the situation. Now, one example from the program, and I, I, you know, the, that I would like to tell you, uh, would include, say, the skill of professionalism. How, what kinds of activities you could give? See, one of the activities uh, that you could present the student is with different images of different people who might be, say, applying for a job. One image may include someone with many tattoos for example you know children would have tattoos all over their body so an individual with many tattoos in their arms uh, while you may have uh, i know another individual with lot of you know ear studs and uh, some uh, nose rings and queer kinds of things with all hair tied up and you know being very in vogue anta helbodu so athara uh, that kind of a uh, applicant. You could uh, also give them a picture of older individuals with wheelchair coming for jobs, or the students. Uh, you know, maybe um, uh, maybe um, let us take our own uh, context of say people from certain region who are used to having good cars. You know, uh, who is also one of the applicant. Study their. You know, you are enact, asking individuals to enact these things and visualize and perceive. Okay, the students are then uh, asked to reflect on the perceptions that people might have about these people. Interviewers may ask each individual different questions based on the image they present. You know, that also you create scenes. So, see, ideas are 10,000 or thousands of ideas you can have. I'm just giving you, where you know, here and there bits and uh, pieces just to tell you how we could mold our children's thinking. See, students might also be asked questions like why older individuals might be reluctant to apply for a job, you know, including their uh, fears that their managers will be younger than them. So what happens? These kinds of questions are designed around the idea of getting students to think about issues that might arise in the workplace or various issues. It could be with respect to age gaps. It could be with respect to appearances. So there could be many factors that you could bring in in order that the children's awareness, the children's uh, you know, responses, the children's understanding of the situation can all be uh, you know, um, uh, critically examined and then you could give inputs to them on what professionalism is about. So, you know, I had, um, uh, I think some time back, uh, designed uh, 
various um, programs for emphasizing uh, skills of integrity, communication, courtesy, responsibility, professionalism, you know, name them, you know, flexibility, teamwork. And there were, you know, teachers who chose particular skill lists which they feel felt that they can uh, be best instructor where they can use uh, those skills best in their classroom for instruction so there are in fact there are several resources where the teachers uh, can um, you know, learn and uh, integrate the soft skill instructions into their teaching there are several links that can help teachers uh, instruct soft skills specific, specifically um, uh, to students of different interests as well. You, allow, you know, for particularly for students who are disabled, uh, there are several approaches to even reaching out to disabled students, you know, which requires a lot of, you know, new, the need to encourage them more, build a lot of conversations, also have conversations between um, uh, the uh, student and the, um, you know, family, because uh, introducing students to, oh, you know, uh, this uh, soft skill is such a, you know, it's also a very, very sensitive issues and issue and particularly when they have some lacuna, then, uh, you know, the attention that we as teachers need to be need to give them is even more. So the first task, uh, you know, uh, is to help the students to improve their communication skills. And then also that also will pay way for them to improve their interpersonal skills. Now, there are other resources that the trainers often uh, you know, give like a broad range of soft skills uh, where uh, both the teachers as well as the students could enroll them for and, uh, you know, it could be in the form of videos. They could demonstrate these certain, uh, I mean, so, soft skills uh, and there could be links for discussions on how soft skills are applied, uh, you know, once an individual takes up a job. So resources, could also include documents about why, for example, I'm just saying why, say, personal appearance is important and how it factors in uh, into, you know, the workplace success. So resources from the net that teachers can lay their hands on, the ideas about how to communicate, how to use um, situations, caselets are umpteen in number to access. Then let's look at this time management activity. Now, time management is something that all students should learn since they need to use it in both their colleges and when they enter the job force. Students have to learn to balance different, say, class assignments of different subjects within the college, but They'll also need to learn how to balance different types of job duties once they go to workplace. So the time management challenge can help students learn how to respond to the challenges. The challenge is straightforward. The teacher writes a list of different activities, but then weighs those activities. Each activity is weighted by assigning a certain number of points to them. So the teacher should take care to come up with enough activities to take up, say, at least more than 10 minutes, where finally the students breaks up, break up into groups and they're given copy of the activities. It's then uh, left to the students to collect as many possible information as they can within this 10 minutes. So there is a time duration within which an activity is needed to be performed. So it is they are conditioned to perform within a period of time. So this activity is actually good for a few reasons. First, it asks the students to work together, emphasizing that 
Teamwork is very, very essential that they need to demonstrate it in the workplace. Second, students need to communicate in order to win the challenge by, say, accumulating the most number of points of any group. Of course, the third reason would be why it's a successful activity is because it asks the students to balance the list of challenges against their time limit. So they will be decisive. Now, they're asked to prioritize which activities have the most value against which activities uh, that have, uh, you know, uh, that, that, could, uh, that could be prioritized at a later point of time to complete it in a limited time. Now, this challenge can be adaptable at almost any class. So time limits can be longer than 10 minutes, and tasks can include, you know, uh, subject-specific tasks, or they could be general uh, task assignments. So they may be asked to look for historical information, uh, or even asked, uh, or they could be even be asked to complete a quick write-up of a topic that is given to them. So it's up to the teacher to properly balance the time limit activities and then award points. Then there is this active uh, listening. Now, how do you uh, imbibe this thing? In this? You see, good listening habits help the students to become better communicators. So teaching active listening is fundamental to preparing the students for the workplace. Active listening can be taught in a number of ways but always involves making sure that uh, a student is highly engaged. Now, students can, you see, pair off, for example, with another student acting as a communicator, another acting as listeners. And generally, students should adhere to certain principles during the activity. And these principles should be communicated clearly by the teacher before the activity begins. So students should not bring, a, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, should, uh, should bring, I must, uh, I put it the other way. The students should bring a non-judgmental approach. They are not going to uh, sit on judgment and play gods. They have to be non-judgmental in their approach to the students who are performing and then ask them probing questions that explores the understanding of the, uh, the student's understanding of a topic. So in actual practice, one student may be asked to speak on a certain topic. The topic, of course, can be, uh, you know, randomized from, a, you know, you can prepare a deck of cards with different topics and then you could just ask them to do the talking. So the speaking student can then begin the, their presentation to the listener. It's up to the listener to respond by engaging deeply with the presentation and following up with appropriate questions. So you must encourage the children, both in their presentation as well as in their listening so that they conceptually understand what is being said. That will help them to raise doubts or clarify through questions. The important part of the active listening activity is the use of follow-up questions. Listeners, should pay attention to the material that has been shared, hearing, respond with questions that explore the topic a little more, go beyond, go more deep. And this active communication may help the uh, student to improve their learning outcomes. You are, in a way, emphasizing on the individual's research. You are uh, helping the individual to communicate on a subject. You are helping individuals to become active listeners to be able to better understand the information that is being shared. See, as teachers, we also come across certain, um, certain uh, challenges and crises within the classroom. We could come across children who have emotional and behavioral disorders in the classroom. You know, we need to be rather more empathetic to such kind of children. Now, 
what are those emotional or behavioral disorders now this refers to a condition in which the behavior or the emotional response of an individual within the classroom or in the college are so different they are so different from the normal children i mean to say that there are certain accepted kind of behavior from children of a particular age group so they they will that they, they are expected to behave uh, appropriately within uh, you know generally who come from that age group or that ethnicity or some or the culture norms you know when when their behavior adversely affects performance in areas say like self care in um, uh, areas of social relationships or if you think that it will impact their self esteem then you know they are good enough reasons to show indications of some element of abnormality an emotional and behavioral disorder is a emotional disability that would be characterized by an uh, uh, by the inability of the individual to build or for that matter to maintain a satisfactory interpersonal relationship with their peers or with their teachers now this emotional behavioral disorders can be seen in different forms anxiety disorders one of samya um, you know um, they may not be they may not be predominant in us but sometimes you see in us you know when we have anxiety disorders we tend to do certain things uh, unconsciously okay so uh, there could be anxiety disorders there could be anta makkalge children with anxiety disorders you can't be you can't put pressure on them you can't further uh, you know push them to the wall it needs a great deal of patience a great deal of tolerance a great deal of empathy uh, you know to deal with such children or children could be suffering from bipolar disorder we may look at it as mood swings and we may think that they this uh, child is you know um, uh, very inconsistent they may have conduct disorders they may even have eating disorders see when we are there's too much of anxiety around you know the one thing that we do is you know we keep on you know forcing ourselves with some food you know that is a form of trying to balance ourselves there could be obsessive compulsive disorder every now and then the child would like to run and wash his or her hands the fear that you know he or she will catch up with infection and something like that there could be psychotic disorders now what i'm trying to say is when you find a child going through certain emotional or behavioral setbacks as teachers there are some effective strategies that we have to adopt to deal with these behavioral issues one would be very importantly to provide a calm environment when they are already facing problem don't make it more chaotic you know this is where you must try your best to minimize the disturbances and distractions and uh, you know try to pay greater attention and of course from our side we teachers are, are also not free we are fully loaded we tend to, we are loaded with enough and more work expectations are high but then at the same time there is a social responsibility that we hold we need to be tolerant like it or not we need to be empathetic these things you know i am also the kind who is you know hyper in my activity and i tend to because i am a typical type a personality i tend to get worked up you know my i i do display sometimes uh, you know my temperamental uh, variations would be such but then i i soon very mercurial i soon come back to my mode and and i and i you know it's a corrective mode of automatic corrective mode that i go into and say no this is not the time when i could get irritated and deal with them in a much more calm way 
we have to emphasize on the routine. This is a necessary teaching strategy. Emphasize on the routine. You give them a little leeway, then things are taken for granted. And always, whatever behavioral expectations you have from the student, please make sure that you reflect the behavioral abilities of the, it should get, uh, it should reflect the behavioral abilities of the student. So behavioral expectations should reflect behavioral abilities of the students. And focus on assisting the students rather than disciplining. See, what is more long lasting is an approach where you try to be more motivational than being controlling. So motivation, motivating than controlling is a more, more uh, um, uh, reward fetching uh, mechanism or approach with students and provide them time out. That means to say, uh, you know, allow them to, uh, you know, uh, um, break away in groups and do their study. It's a very, very effective mechanism of, uh, you know, trying to ensure that there is some element of interaction. There is an element of intimacy that is developed. So because of which, you know, the uh, greater the interaction, more the feelings, more the feelings, greater the sentiments, and then the bonding. And they're able to relate to one another better. And at the same time, make sure that the student feels safe. <coughs> These issues are also need to be addressed. And then you keep the class uh, rules or the activities in which they have to involve simple and clear. You know, don't complicate the issues. And, do, and don't uh, uh, also make sure that I th you see very, very effective, at least it has been very, very effective that I see, reward positive behavior and do it in public then and there. Don't postpone rewarding positive behavior. And whenever it is done collectively, See, it's not a new gyan that I'm giving you. All of us know we are all experienced teachers. You're all uh, esteemed scholars. You're all renowned. I mean, uh, you know, you, uh, you're all uh, individuals with great concern. And uh, uh, this is a chosen profession. Teaching is a chosen profession. It is by choice that you have gone into this. So there's nothing new that I'm telling you. But what happens is in the midst of our everyday work, the jussel bustle, we tend to neglect this aspect. It just goes off our mind because we have something else to achieve. So what happens is uh, we are not consciously, you know, applying our minds on some of these things. It is always good to reward positive behaviors. You know, children are so sensitive. Just, I tell you, just an eye contact with a student while you are doing makes him feel important. He feels He's the identified one, you know? It's not that, uh, unfortunately, all we teachers do one thing, including me. Whenever we address the students, if a student nods his head or is able to relate to you well, or he's a bright student who interacts, uh, uh, you know, with you in the class and he's in the same plane, there is a general tendency that we pay our attention to these few students. Our eye movement and, uh, you know, um, would or the point of contact would be with amongst these few only. There could be tens of others who are sitting back or somewhere who are not able to even, uh, you know, we may, we may not even look at them at any point of time. That's a very bad practice. We need to, um, you know, often look into the eyes of, you know, all the students just by uh, by only looking into a student and speaking it will believe me act as a positive reinforcement not necessarily uh, you know uh, sometimes what happens if there are bright students uh, who are trying to encourage them to participate call them by their names just the fact that the teacher knows the name of the student itself is a big thing what you use their name and say what do you say what is your point of view? Uh, that itself will act as a form of recognition. So 
uh, it's important that we reward positive behaviors very important equally is fair treatment for all we must rise above religion caste creed and importantly stereotyping we are all human we all have a tendency to err we are all uh, you know governed by you know we are all conditioned and we have all grown up in that setup very difficult to come out of it but knowing that we have a very responsible position and knowing that students model on us they observe us at every point they have nothing else to do in the classroom but to look at you and to observe you what you say how, how your every gesture is being you know absorbed therefore my friends very important is to have an approach where we treat all of them equally and where possible give little mini breaks to the children you know because from morning you know continuously they are sitting now i feel that i must give a mini break here you know so that we are able to uh, you know exchange our thoughts so the, it is very important that uh, humor also supposedly very important humor in your class is very important to keep the children uh, you know and the lighter vein to keep them uh, you know children as children you know that is one beautiful way of getting them to your uh, class and make it's it's like an ice breaker every time there is a, there is a relevant joke that is being cracked without hurting the feelings of people then it is a form of trying to break the ice so as far as possible wherever possible try to use motivational strategies see the role of a teacher in the emotional development of a student is very 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 important see children uh, you know um, uh, there is a prayer guru brahma at least when they say guru brahma we should be deserving to be held in that uh, state okay so teachers are required to play the role of caregivers okay to promote the students social and emotional health that is also our responsibility how by establishing trusting relationships now when teachers express warmth and the genuine warmth the warmth when they express affection when they show respect they are able to instill the confidence in the students so teachers can therefore i rather i must say they should intentionally teach model and also reinforce positive behaviors now we know i have been talking about it again and again some of the skills that students should develop these i will call them as quintessential skills are learning to be assertive so that nobody takes advantage of you okay and when you are being assertive you are always being constructive you are not becoming you won't be dysfunctional secondly teaching the children to hone responsibility not run away from people or problems they must be able to own responsibility they must be told that the good and bad is because of their own act they must own you know they must be uh, in fact you must um, you must develop them to become internals not externals meaning to say an internal is one who says the good and bad that happens to me is because of my own actions whereas as an external what do you do all the good is because of me all the bad is because of xyz factors okay they tend to do the blame game so try to teach children to take on responsibilities for their action they should be taught self management skills you know self management skills can begin from self awareness to self regulation and self control all of which is very very essential it could be taught in their day to day activities of course i have told you about communication skills 
I've told you about collaborative skills, that is teamwork. Then they must also be taught. Just because I said they have to learn teamwork, it's not that, you know, they tend to be dependent on others or inter, uh, interdependence is good. But first of all, they must move away from dependence to independence. They must move away from dependence. Once they move from dependence to independence, they would have achieved something called as private victory. The moment they move from independence to interdependence, they are said to have acquired public with. So children must be also taught to independently work. Where need, then they should be able to coordinate, they should be able to draw resources from people. That is what we refer to as networking skills. And children should be taught critical thinking. You know, they must know to even critic. That means to say they must be able to distinguish between what is good, what is bad, what is ugly, what is helpful, what is dysfunctional. So through this act of, uh, you know, through the process of um, critical thinking, you are able to uh, build logic in the minds of people. Now, some of these important skills for which we teachers are invaluably responsible for are one, communication. A huge part of teaching is communicating information. Now, if you like the teacher, you like the subject. At least in my, uh, I remember in my school days, I had a teacher who taught math. She was an excellent teacher. She was a brilliant teacher. She taught mathematics, but everything she taught for this uh, dud uh, would go just above my head. And, uh, you know, the teacher also had a ten tendency to physically, you know, um, you know, literally slap us if we did not do well. I hated the teacher so much that I hated mathematics. You know, the quantification is something that I would always like to be away from. So our behavior, our actions can, uh, you know, have a big dent or an impact on the child uh, likes and dislikes. So, uh, you know, we need to be pretty, pretty cautious about how uh, we communicate, how we conduct, along with communication, how we conduct. Then patience, yes, is something that we we need to demonstrate and children need to learn. People learn at, see, we must understand that students learn at different rates. Uh, you know, not everybody is endowed with, uh, you know, a high level of intelligence. So they could be slow learners. We need to have a lot of patience. We need to demonstrate that. We other children also will see from us how to, uh, I mean, how to be patient. And Creativity, yes, again, people learn best when they're doing something for fun. And this is caused by the joy of learning and doing something that you find is very interesting. And then enthusiasm, you see. That is also something that we must inculcate. If we are passive, we are laid back. And if we, you know, uh, don't show initiative, uh, you know, children are also, you know, much easier for them. It's, it's easier to learn things that are, um, uh, you know, not very constructive than to learn things that are really constructive. So enthusiasm, we, that exuberance, that enthusiasm must be displayed. And it is very infectious. If you are uh, enthusiastic, the, you know, you keep the students on their toes. And they in turn will keep you on your toes. And this makes the whole class session, the interaction so interesting. You know, it is never a bane to go into a class. And then instill confidence in the, in the students, even if they ask a wrong question. Tell them how they could have posed this question in a much more relevant way and give them the answers. 
it is not always possible that the teacher knows all the answers and it is not a stigma if you don't know the answer as a teacher tell them that you will refer and get back to them and then clarify the respect for you is will be levels higher then you know say shut up you silly fool but the moment you say that you know the other person was also you know becomes cautious and one way of ensuring that the students don't ask any questions in the classroom is by being snobbish and putting them off that is a no no for a teacher if you want to instill confidence in your students you must be confident and you must display a lot of maturity when you answer the question to a student you know it must be such a way that it itself should uh, uh, you know act as a motivator for other children to you know get their questions clarified it should not be uh, a kind where you know you scare them away so that nobody ask questions and as a teacher if you are dedicated believe me your student also will be dedicated i'm not saying all of them are like that oh agadre then uh, the world would have been a beautiful place to live in but at least you are showing them the way and you are not guilty that you know you have not done your job if they don't walk your way walk the right way i mean then uh, you see uh, again there are there will be more hurdles for them to face but as a teacher it is our duty to uh, to lay a path a path where you do right things right the first time so to that extent we teachers need to be dedicated we need to we need to teach them how in, in my next classes i will be going to some of these issues of uh, you know mind into in a greater detail on various uh, aspects of soft skills and uh, an attempt if it's not also it's not something that we can completely measure but Uh, an indicative measure of what uh, you know how you could um, uh, measure the soft skills of a, uh, a student so conflict resolution as i said is another uh, aspect because wherever there are people there are bound to be conflicts and how in a unbiased manner you as a teacher would demonstrate your style of handling conflicts and that's another issue that i will be taking on and we as teachers also need to imbibe in them to be organized these children need to be more real how do you ensure that the children are reliable are made to be reliable and they are more organized you as a teacher display that for example your board management you know your board management is the most difficult thing today we have everything digitized we have everything ppt is everything there was a time when we were taught by teachers who who had such beautiful board management skills you know if you begin at the end of the session one glance at the board must be enough to tell you what is the scope of the discussion of that day what has been covered so it's important that through our styles we teach the children to be even more organized so these are uh some of these uh, skills that i'd like to that i'd been talking about i will continue with this i've still not i mean there's much much to speak about and i have not concluded on it uh you know i did want to have an interactive session uh, right away but then i know you are breaking for tea where well, as we continue at 3:45 we will uh, continue with the interaction so shall we break for now Yes, madam. Okay, yes, okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you, ma'am. 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 Okay, we'll come back you, again. Three forty-five. Thank you, ma'am.